Hi guys, it's November on the farm. Uh, we've been crazy busy over the summer, but I thought it was about time that I gave you an update on what we're doing here on the chili farm, uh, especially with the aquaponics. So let me uh, show you what we've been up to uh, and how the system is right now. It's, uh, it's going remarkably well and we're really pleased with it. Let me show you around. In each of the tanks, we've now got quite a few. So in the first tank here, you know, we've probably got about 20 in this tank. And then in the second tank, uh, we've uh, rescued an awful lot. So you can see this one's actually really quite full. Um, there's probably close to sort of 50 or 60 in this tank. So we're certainly increasing the numbers of fish we've got. Uh, in the third tank, you know, we've got the, the, the larger ones in here. So there's probably, you know, sort of 15 or so in this, in this tank. It's got the large ones, so you know, they're uh, quite happy in there on their own with the space. And then again, some more rescued ones. Um, so you know, a large number of uh, fish in there, which is, which is really good for obviously the uh, output that they're producing and, and the eventual nitrates that we're gonna have for the plants. So each of the tanks has got an air stone in it. So the pump splits off and it puts air into each of the two tanks that it's connected to and the air stone comes in, make sure that it increases the level of dissolved oxygen in the water. We're feeding the fish with just a standard uh, koi fish food. Um, and each day that we put the food in, just checking to make sure the fish are jumping up to eat the, the food. Getting towards the you know the end of the year, temperatures getting colder, so they're eating less this time of year. But they're still very happy and healthy, uh, and certainly um, going through the food quite well. So one thing that we're finding really useful, obviously, is to check the the water not only for pH but also for parts per million. This way we can see in exactly how much nutrients are coming through and going into the the plants. Now, if you're doing a, a standard hydroponic system and you're putting your nutrients in, you'll be looking for about 400 parts per million. Uh, as the plants are seedlings and then as they grow up and certainly things like chilies that need more food you'll be looking for eight nine hundred parts per million you know as they're growing into you know full uh, full flower and fruiting uh, so it's handy to have a little device like this really quite cheap it cost us I think eight or nine pounds um, you know off the internet uh, quite easy to find this particular device also measures the temperature so we can keep a record of how the temperatures uh, going up and down in the water and see if that's affecting the fish at all and certainly see uh, how that affects the feeding uh, of the fish. The next thing we do is each day when we come in here and we're feeding the fish we just quickly uh, use the measure to see what the temperature is in the water and we can check the parts per million uh, as well. So just get the device here, hold the on off button and then we can see the parts per million is set to zero. So the first thing I tend to do is just press the temperature button and we can see that the temperature is 64 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius. So it's a rather warm November day. Uh, but if we take, put this into the water, we can have a look. And now we can see that the water temperature is sitting there, it's about 19 degrees. So in the ground, the water's holding a, a nice temperature. Uh, and I'll be going through to the plants. So then just press the, the button there, take it back to the parts per million and just see how much nutrient we've got in the water. So at the moment we're 345, 350 around that region, so around about 350, which is okay for seedlings and it's okay for uh, this time of year is at the end of the season when the plants obviously are quite dormitory, but it's not ideal for you know big solid summer growth. So something to bear in mind, making sure that the nutrients are high, giving you know, lots of food and lots of nutrients and lots of fish, just to keep the levels up when you're uh, getting the, the strong growth through the summer. So if we take you next door into the greenhouse, you can see what's uh, changed in here. Made a few little changes, I think mentioned last time. One of the things that we had before and we noticed was the sides of the tank, if you look along the canal, that they were bowing out. Now there's absolutely no bows whatsoever and we've got a nice solid above ground canal. Now how we fixed that was simply by putting in some steel rods through the top 
just to hold that tight. And then we did exactly the same at the bottom. So underneath the liner, we slid through some uh, rods, connected them up, just put a bit of sand on top just to make sure there was nothing rubbing on the liner. And now the side supports are actually keeping the canal absolutely straight and level, which is wonderful. Okay, so if you're putting them in, obviously it's a good idea to try and make sure that they're not in the way of any of the plants. And you know, the way you can do that is just by cutting your end panel to whatever size you need in order that the plants then sit either side of any bars when they grow. So three bars in there for three of the connectors and it's doing rather well. Okay, if we have a look at the plants that we've got in the canal, we've got some Japanese uh, greens, we've got some like mild mustard greens, things like the, the dragon's tongue, we've got um, Matsuma, Japanese greens, um, and some other oriental greens in there, mustard greens, green wave, uh, and they all seem to be taking quite well. They've just uh, recently been planted and the seedlings are coming up nicely. Next to that we've got some coriander and even a lemon variety of coriander which I've just started to come through and they seem to be doing okay. And then we've got watercress. Uh, obviously watercress are going to absolutely love an aquaponic system and in the canal they're going to do rather well. And then we've got our winter winter veg. So we've got uh, some cabbage uh, and then next to that we've got some cauliflower as well we're trying in here. Uh, winter cabbage got the, the lettuces that we've had through there, so cross lettuces doing well. And then uh, some other lettuces, some of them not doing quite so well, obviously the nighttime temperatures are dropping this time of year, so some of the lettuces are suffering, so we, uh, we're seeing the impact on them with the weather. And then we've been eating the lettuces all the way through uh, the summer and they've been doing remarkably well, so these ones we've just let them uh, bolt, let them go to seed and we're going to see if we can get some seeds from them, just to collect our own and we know that these do well. They're a little bit, uh, a little bit pale at the moment because the nutrients are quite low. It's, uh, we tested them earlier, they're only sort of 350 parts per million. We'd like to have them higher just to get some, some nice good uh, greenish on them that we had coming through the summer. And then if we have a look at our two flood and drain beds, they seem to be doing quite well. We were having a, a little bit of an issue with our guard that was moving uh, with the, the water pressure a bit too much so we just put a, a little brick on there just to hold the guard down but down the side there the water's raising up and the auto siphon works absolutely lovely so the plants we've got in here um, we've got some beetroot which don't seem to be doing awfully well I have to be honest um, but we're, we're trying to see how they get on then we've got some coriander plants at the front they seem to be doing really well they love the flood and drain in there but perhaps even a little bit more of growth in here than they are in the canal. Then we've got some leeks uh, which have gone in there. They went in uh, about a month or so ago uh, and they seem to be doing okay. Not growing particularly fast this time of year but just seeing you know, how they're doing over winter. Put some packed choice seedlings in uh, about a week ago and they're doing really well. They've taken off as uh, you know, four or five rows of packed choice uh, and their seedlings seem to have taken quite nicely. Then if we look in the second bed here We've got some um, mustard purple osaka, uh, seedlings that have just gone in there. They seem to be taking quite well. Uh, and then our onions, absolutely seem to be loving it. Uh, just at the back here, we've got uh, a rhubarb, it's a raspberry red rhubarb, just got that underneath the cover. So let's put look at that. And we can just see, just around the side here, there we go, we get them close. Got some little shoots, some little growths coming in there. So that's just gone in and that's starting to grow. So just give that in the dark just to uh, encourage it to grow. And then we've got garlic in here, which seems to love the beds here. So at the front we've just got a couple of elephant garlics and then we've got uh, two or three rows of the Thermidor garlic as well, which seems to be doing quite well. Uh, and then next to it we've got a row of wasabi. Uh, and wasabi seems to, to love the beds as well. Obviously it's quite similar to the way that wasabi would grow naturally. In Japan, so it would be next to the river as the water comes in and sort of floods it. Uh, it goes past, gets the nice nutrients as it grows there, and it's pretty much a similar system to the aquaponics where the nutrients flow in, they flow past, and then they flow out again. So, hopefully, they'll do really well. It's got to be a bit careful 
uh, with any damp uh, from the water, any splashing on there, because it can leave a little bit of mould on the, the leaves, which is not ideal, but it's, it's nice and easy to remove with a bicarbonate soda mix, something like that. And then just at the back here, we've got our chilies. Obviously, being a chili farm, we've got to have chilies around somewhere. So we've got uh, four rows of chilies that we've just put in here to see how they do over winter. We've got some of the fruits that are still hanging onto the plants, and they're actually still ripening off, even though it's into you know late November. We're coming up to December soon, but they seem to be doing all right. They're a little bit light in colour, obviously, because the nutrients in the water are not so um, high. But you know, there's still some, some green growth on some of these, and we've got some jalapenos there. We've got some padrons, and we've also got some super pots in there, Carolina Reaper, orange habaneros, uh, things like that. So uh, they all seem to be doing rather well, and um, quite happy with them. And if you can hear just in the background there, we've got the noise, and basically the auto siphon is just kicking in. So it just starts to overflow to begin with, and then you know, as the, the water goes over the top there, it will have a, a full on siphon effect and it will drain the bed. Uh, and this is happening about every 10 to 15 minutes, so four times an hour, the bed is being drained, and the plants are really appreciating that. Okay guys, so that's a roundup of how the aquaponics system is doing on the chili farm. It's the end of November, coming into December, so we'll keep you posted on how they're doing over winter and how they go into the new year. But until then, hope you have a happy and healthy holiday season and a great new year. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please put them in the box below and we'll have a read through them and we'll reply. But until then, take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.